Hey everybody, Captain Beanard back here with another Wi-Fi battle. So, uh, today we have a battle against Joshi, my friend and fellow YouTuber. Um, he's made a lot of appearances here on the channel in the past, um, but this is a direct rematch from uh, battle number three here on Sword and Shield. So, as you can see, I am using the same team that I was using last time. We're going to go ahead and uh, check out what he is using. All right, so uh, looks to be a pretty interesting team as usual. He always has um, interesting teams on hand, um, very unique, which uh, always makes for fun battles with him. I will link his channel in the video description um, in case you guys haven't checked him out already. So um, quickly have to decide here what I want to lead with, and I think I'm just going to go with the Colossal this time around. We'll see how that works out. So there he is, and uh, looks like he's going to lead with the Roserade. So it's not terrible for me. So, what do I want to do here? Well, I could get the Stealth Rock set up, but I don't know how useful it really is against this team here. So I think I'm just going to Flare Blitz, play it safe right off the bat. Um, he's actually going to outspeed me in Giga Drain, so it's going to take me down by about a third, so that's not too bad. Um, but I'm going to hit him with this Flare Blitz in return. I am max physical attack, and that is just going to one-shot kill this thing outright. Um, and that is going to drop me down to, or him down to five Pokemon right away, rather. So a nice start to the match for me. Although I do take a bunch of recoil off of that. So I am going to be pretty weakened here. So we'll see what he wants to do in response to that. So it looks like he's just going to come in with the Gudra here. So I could try to switch out here, but at the HP I'm at, I don't think there's really much of a reason to do that. So I think I'm just going to stay in here and try to hit him with a Stone Edge and see how that goes. He's probably just going to finish me. Oh, he's actually going to Curse. Well, that's interesting. Huh. <laughs> So that is going to cut his speed and then increase his attack and defense. So looks to be physical Gudra here, which is very interesting. So I'm going to hit him with a Stone Edge, and that is only going to hit him by, down by about a quarter. So eesh, that's not much at all. Um, so he's got that boost off. So that is definitely interesting. So... I think this time around, I'm just going to go for the Stealth Rock here. He might just outspeed me and take me out. But no, yeah, he's going to outspeed me still in Breaking Swipe. And I am not quite going to go down from that, actually. Um, he's going to drop my attack and then uh, take some damage from the Rocky Helmet. And then I'm just going to throw those Stealth Rocks up there. So um, that's not bad. So I um, guess I'm just going to go for the... Stone Edge again here. I don't expect to live another attack from this thing, although he is just going to curse again. Um, so that's going to give him another um, speed drop, but attack and defense increase here. So more than likely, this Stone Edge is not going to do anything, but actually, it's not going to do anything because I miss. So that sucks a little bit. So maybe I just go for an Earthquake this time. So if he decides to boost, I don't. I can actually. Um, at least get a little bit of chip damage on this thing. Oh, and he's going to rest, so that's not good. Okay. Yeah, that's not good at all. So he is going to uh, go back up to full HP off of that, and then he's going to wake up immediately with the 
uh, Chesto Berry, so Resto Chesto. This is a very interesting set, actually, which is uh, one of the reasons I like playing Joshi. So um, Earthquake there, not going to do anything. Um, yes, that's not great. So nothing really to do but just stay in and trying to chip this thing. Um, I'm actually going to outspeed him after the second speed drop, so that's kind of funny. Um, the Stone Edge not going to do anything, though, and then he's going to curse up once again. So he's going to get another uh, speed drop, yet attack and defense increase. So um, he knows I can't really do anything to him at this point, so he may just end up um, cursing all the way up, possibly. Who knows? Um, although I think that might be a mistake on his part since I do still have a lot of answers for this thing but he's gonna breaking swipe again and that will definitely take me out at that range um, but he is gonna take that rocky helmet damage which leaves him a little below half but with the loss of the colossal there that will put me down to um, five Pokemon but that's okay I do have a plenty of answers for this thing so um, I think the one I'm gonna go with is my Gudra actually um, so, um, just to kind of have an epic uh, face-off of the Gudras here. So, um, after he cursed up all those times, what is he actually at? Um, he is at plus three um, attack and defense, minus three speed. So, I should definitely outspeed him and hopefully just take him out from that range with a Draco Meteor. So, but no, he is actually going to bust out the Dynamax instead. Yeesh. Well, that might allow him to survive the attack there, and so yeah, that's not great. So there's the Dynamax Gudra. So I'm gonna Draco, and I miss the Draco Meteor. Well, doesn't that suck? And he's gonna one-shot me with a Max Wormwind. Well, that was a very unfortunate turn of events. Huh. All right. Well, that sucked. <laughs> so that's going to knock me down to four Pokemon. Um, and that's going to force me to come in with the good old Dairy Queen here. The Alola Ninetales with the Snow Warning to get the hail up. And we're going to hit him with that Blizzard. Yes, the Blizzard. And it can't miss, so that's good. And it is not going to be enough to take this thing out, unfortunately. It'll knock him into the red. And then he's going to max Steel Spike me. And that is going to knock me all the way down to my Focus Sash, but I do survive because of it. And um, he's going to get that another physical defense increase off of that, but um, that is okay. Um, he's going to take that hail damage, and then um, he definitely shouldn't be able to survive another blizzard from that range. So we're just going to go for that again. So he's just going to stay in, and that blizzard is finally going to take this thing out. Jeez. That was an ordeal. So that's going to be it for his Gudra. That's going to tie us up at four apiece. So yeah, that was, um, oof, that thing definitely put a dent in my team, but that is okay. Um, so he is going to come in now, the um, Gigalith. So he is going to take that Stealth Rock damage, and he is going to get the Sandstream to um, set the Sandstorm up, actually, which isn't great. Because um, I was actually thinking of just going for the Aurora Veil with my last turn here with the Alola Ninetales, but... That's not going to be a thing now, so um, I might actually just want to switch out here to save my nine tails for later, which is what I think I'm going to do. So I'm going to switch into the Seismitoad, the Hypnotoad here. Hopefully he doesn't try to get his rocks up, which would um, kind of prevent me from switching back in without dying. But he's going to go for a throat chop here, so that's fine. So that is going to take me down by about a quarter. And then I am going to regain some HP with the leftovers. So, hmm. I think the safe play here is probably just to Earthquake, so that's what we're going to do. And I, this thing is max physical defense, I'm sure, is Gigalith, so he could probably take one. Um, but I am 
uh, max HP, so I feel confident I should be able to absorb whatever he wants to throw at me as well. But he is actually going to go for Switch instead, so that's fine. And uh, he's going to come in with the Trevenant, so uh, might have should have seen that coming. But um, he's going to take that Stealth Rock damage as I am going to hit him with the Earthquake. And that is going to not do a ton, um, take him down to about two-thirds. Then he's going to take that Sand damage, and I'm going to regain some HP with the Leftovers. So... Um, I think now is going to definitely be a switch out because I don't want to get taken out with a grass attack. So um, we're going to come in with the Drift Blum here. Should be um, hopefully fit to handle um, at least one attack from this thing, even if he does predict and go for the ghost move. And no, he's just going to go for the Horn Leech instead to play it safe. So not going to do too much to me there, um, but is going to give him a little bit of HP back. So I'll put him back up to about three quarters, and then um, it looks like he is going to outspeed me since he does take the sand damage first, which isn't great. Um, so I think i um, just going to go for the Shadow Ball here and hope that I can survive an attack from this thing. I am max HP, but uh, he's going to outspeed, hit me with the Shadow Claw, and I am not going to be able to take one, unfortunately. But I am going to damage him there with the Aftermath, which is good. Um, that is also going to pop his, um, probably Citrus Berry, it looks like. Yep, so that'll put him back up to about two-thirds. That is going to take my Drift Blim out and knock me down to three Pokemon as he does take um, that Sand damage once again. So, not the greatest of situations here for me, but I do still have the Alola Ninetales that I can use to come back in and reset the um, Hail over the sand, so that's good. That's what I wanted. So now the question is, do I want to go for the blizzard outright to try to take this thing out, or do I want to try and set the Aurora Veil? And I think I'm just gonna go for the blizz... Uh, I don't know, actually. It's a tough one, because if he, I think, um, if he switches into the, into the, um, yeah, if he switches into the Gigalith, that would be bad. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for the Blizz, just going to go for the Blizzard, time's running out. And he's going to protect, actually, so I should have just gone for the Aurora Veil, so that sucks. So, he's going to burn a turn there, but he's going to take the Hail damage. And then the Harvest is actually going to activate to give him his Citrus Berry back. So, just going to try for another Blizzard here, and he's going to go for the Switch. And he's going to go back into Gigalith, so that sucks. So he's going to take that rock damage, but then he's going to set the sand stream over my hail, unfortunately, which means I am going to go down to the sand damage this turn, actually. So I do connect with the blizzard, though. That's good. That's not going to do anything to this thing. That sucks. And then I'm going to lose my nine tails there. So definitely not a great situation for me right now. Whew. I think I might have one shot here, potentially. And that might be with the Hitmon Lee. So that's the shot I'm going to take. So I'm going to come in with Hitmon Lee. So. I guess it's now or never. So I'm just going to pop the. Hmm. Uh, pop the normal gem fake out. So there it is. I'm um, going to trip my unburden to double my speed. And we're going to get that chip damage on this thing. And then the mandatory flinch, of course. So... I guess I don't really have much to lose at this point, so... 
I could go for the Dynamax here. Get that Max Knuckle, yeah. But how much damage is that going to be doing? That's going to be doing far less, actually. But at least I won't get the stat drops. Eh, whatever. I think I'm just going to close combat. I have to try and get more damage. So hopefully that's enough. And that is going to be enough to take this thing out, thankfully. Okay. So that's going to drop my defense and special defense. But that is going to take care of the Gigalith. That's going to leave him with three Pokemon, and I'm going to take the sand damage, but hopefully Hitmonlee's in a position to do some good things now. So he's going to come in with the Solosis here. Alright, so I am packing the Throat Chop, so hopefully that should just one-shot this thing outright. So we're going to go for that. And that is just going to one-shot kill this thing outright, thankfully. Whew, so that's going to drop him down to two Pokemon, so Hitmonlee definitely getting me back in the game here as I'm going to take that sand damage. So he's going to come in here with the Bihium, and he's going to take some damage from the rocks. So I should outspeed him. I don't know if a Throat Chop will take him out here. Um... The max darkness is going to do a lot more than the throat chop will, so I think I'm just going to break out the Dynamax and uh, do the max darkness to hopefully guarantee a KO on this thing here. And we'll see if Hitmonlee can pull this late game sweep out. So, so there is the Dynamax Hitmon Bruce Lee ready to go. And I am going to outspeed him for sure, hit him up with that Max Darkness. And that is going to one-shot the Behem. And that's going to drop him down to just one Pokemon. And that's going to be it for the Sandstorm as well. And... His last Pokemon should just be the Trevenant. Which is weakened here. And he's going to take that Stealth Rock damage, but that's actually going to trip his Citrus Berry to give him a bunch of HP back. Um, so he's going to be back up to about two-thirds now. Even so, I don't think he'll be able to survive a Max Darkness, um, but we'll find out. So here comes one more Max Darkness, hopefully to finish the game. And he cannot survive, so that is going to take the Trevenant out. So Hitmonlee... Coming in clutch, that is game. So, we won that one 2-0 versus Joshi, but that was a really good match. Um, definitely a roller coaster. Um, definitely was behind the eight ball for most of that game, but Hitmon Lee able to pull out the late game sweep at the end there. That is awesome. So, uh, Thanks for watching again, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy, and stay tuned for more new battles in the future. So that's it, and we'll see you next time.